Hey guys, Dr. Dusa, how are you? I'm going to give you some facts versus fear as far as what I know about the coronavirus. Just a little background. I have a degree from a long time ago, a bachelor's degree in respiratory care. Uh, so I dealt with a lot of respiratory dysfunction in patients for a long, long time. I also bachelor's in human biology and doctor in chiropractic. Uh, and it all, it all helps. Listen, it's, it, that's meaningless information to you, but it helps me a little bit in understanding what I want to help you understand a little bit about the coronavirus with all of the, the kaleidoscope of crazy uh, information that's out there that I don't really pay much attention to. Somebody said to me the other day, Doc, you sure don't seem like you know much about this. I'm like, listen, I, I, I don't know what to believe or what to know, what to learn or what to hold as truth. So, you know, I'm, I'm a kind of a be your own lab type of guy. I like to learn on my own and observe anecdotally what's actually going on. Uh, I'm not given to uh, flare-ups or, or craziness or, or panic or any of that stuff. It's just not in my countenance. I mean, if that's how you cope with things, uh, so be it. But maybe I could help you out a little bit of that with some information that I have for you. Now, what really happens when you're infected with coronavirus? There's two groups of people uh, that I've found. There are those who are not that sick and those who are very sick. Now, if you're not that sick, you may have a little bit of a headache. You may have a dry cough that arises from the chest, a uh, low-grade fever, muscle aches, kind of like stuff that you'd start to experience if you, you had a flu. Now, this being the time that it is, if you have any of that, you may want to call your doctor, not, not go to the hospital. And, and your doctor, your APRN, talk to him or her and, and run the symptoms by them, and they'll maybe uh, give you the best uh, um course that you should take. Uh, the good thing is, um, if you're just mildly affected by this, gen and, and you're in the right age group, and you've got a good immune system, uh, generally this will go away in one to two weeks. It, it has been found that on the early stages, if you're not that sick, so to speak, you take a, 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 a chest x-ray of the lungs, and you do start to undergo a, a uh, lung uh, dysfunction and regeneration uh, pretty quickly. But that reverts when the infection goes away. Uh, and another thing, you may not know you have it at first, so this is a good time for you to infect someone else. So again, do your due diligence. If you're experiencing any of those, give your doctor a call. And, you know, that's the category that I call not too sick. Now, if you're very sick, and we hear about these folks who are very sick, it usually affects those who are elderly. Now, I'll use my parents as an example. They're 80 and 81. That's, that's elderly, okay? Uh, and, and what happens? Uh, what do they st start suffering? Well, first of all, think about it. When you're that old, you've been on this planet that long, you're going to be immunocompromised. Your immune system, the system in your body that fights off invaders, let's say infections, bacterial, viral, whatever they might be, uh, it's not so sound anymore because it's become corroded over time. It could be corroded by bad habits. There could be mitigating or factors that uh, affect the immune system, uh, heart, heart disease, uh, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, that's, those are lung problems, hypertension, diabetes, some of these folks have all of those. So again, your body is an accepting haven for this coronavirus. Well, so what happens at this point in an elderly person who, who gets some of this, and within a week they wake up and it's extreme shortness of breath, where they feel, you know, they're giving you that international sign of panic like this, they can't breathe, they think they can't breathe, They've got to go to the hospital right away. Um, and what do they do? Ordinarily, if it's bad enough, they're going to give you either a high pressurized rebreathing mask or a breather, or uh, they may put you on a ventilator. Now, you see in the media, they call it a respirator. It's not a respirator. That's a misnomer. It does not respire for you. It, it's a ventilator. It ventilates. It gets the air in, and hopefully things accept that and work, because the whole game is you want to get the oxygen in, get it into the blood, get it to the tissue, and drag out the CO2. So it's O2 in, CO2 out. You're not doing that on your own because of these interfering factors that we're talking about right now. All right, so you've got that going on. What's the next thing? You're on this ventilator. Your blood sat your oxygen saturation goes down in your blood, further uh, making the problem worse. You're getting into hypoxia, so these other systems start to get involved. Uh, you fall into a very bad uh, syndrome called acute respiratory distress syndrome, and that's very bad because this affects the alveoli in the lungs. These millions of tiny little air exchange sacs. And they lose the ability to effectively take in that oxygen, diffuse it into the blood, get it into the tissue, drag out the CO2. So you're bringing in O2, blowing out CO2. You're not doing that that well anymore. So there's a bunch of sequela or outcomes that occur because of that, because of that dysfunction right there. So you got that now. What happens next? Well, you've heard of pneumonia. That can occur. But 
uh, more importantly, you could suffer something called sepsis. It's a very bad infection of sometimes the entire body. And ordinarily with an infection, the body secretes factors that will fight that off, but not with this virus, not when you get sepsis. And the, pro the biggest problem with this is you, it, th this, will, this can potentially cause multi-organal system dysfunction or breakdown. Um, you, you got the organs, you got the lungs, you got the heart, you got the spleen. Now we'll throw the intestines in there coming down this way. Uh, you got the gallbladder, uh, you got the kidneys, you got the liver, and you got the pancreas. I think I got everything in there. Okay, they all work together to give you a nice homeostasis where you feel like everything's fine. Your biofeedback tells you you feel good because everything's working well. But if one of these things falls off, like let's say your heart is not working well, other organs have to compensate, and they overwork because the heart's underworking. And then you get an imbalance, you get sick, and then there's involvement of other organs. So this is what happens at this point. And chiefly with this uh, syndrome, with this virus, uh, it's, it seems at this point more so that the kidneys are involved. And some people are experiencing kidney failure going on dialysis. But again, you get to this point, listen, it's very likely that you're facing death. I'm not talking about numbers or how many people. I have no idea. I'm just a guy in a room here, okay? I don't profess. I, I, I'm not one to say I read it here. I saw it there. I basically don't believe anybody, okay? Only because they don't know. They're, I think people are doing their best, but, you know, it ain't very good. <laughs> so, you know, I'm trying to see how everything plays out. I'm going with what I know. I don't go with what I believe. I mean, if you believe in ghosts, that, that's fine. Prove it. You can't. Well, there we go. I go with what I know. Listen, you're facing death. So, again, if you're one of those people who's not so sick, get on the horn with your doctor, uh, your, your healthcare practitioner, whoever it is that you trust and whoever has uh, the ability to deliver you to what you have to do or where you have to go. Uh, but if you're one of these people who are severe and you're at this point and you can't keep your food down and you're, you're mentally incontinent, you don't even, you're kind of becoming delirious. Uh, the sh shortness of breath is profound. Um, the list goes on and on. Listen, get, get in, get into the hospital, see your doctor, get, get, get into triage. I don't care what you read or what you see. Okay. You'll find a bed. You'll be attended to. You will live and rise to fight another day. Okay, this is America, and we've got to stop fighting. Everybody should get along. Goodness for everyone. I really dig that. Strengthening your sphere of influence. I've written about it. Um, and that's all, about all I have to say with that. And like I always like to say, listen, all will be well. So don't you worry and be happy. And I think within a month or two, things will be better than ever. You have a good night. Dr. Mike Dusa.